Okay, we're going to put this part back on. So basically put the spring on and you can see that it goes on this side of the pin. And then you can see this um, right here. See this side doesn't have the threads until the middle part. So this is the chamfered end. And the opposite side, you can see that the threads go all the way through. So that means that um, what you're going to do is basically goes in like this. Oops. So it's going to go in like this. So, um, and then your bolt and your keeper or your stay, whatever it's called, it's going to go this side. And so your threads, you see that there's no threads on the beginning. Uh, where the bolt is so this is going to be uh, where the threaded side is so the chamfered side that doesn't have threads at the first part um, it goes into there and then these threads should catch the other side where it's fully threaded all right so this um, I tried lightly tapping it with a rubber hammer and I was worried that I uh, damaged something because I've damaged something before on the power steering rack and um, yeah, that went really bad so what I'm going to do is I'm using uh, my old bearings I picked one that's not perfect but it looks like it's going to work I need to put the nut and um, the washer back on so I need something that's about this height so that the at least some threads will catch on and you can use that old nut to push this thing back down so I'm using this bearing and I'm using this bearing thing that um, I'm worried about is I'm pushing on the race but that's what the repair manual says it says use a collar to push on the race and use the old nut so this is gonna put the the most amount of surface onto the the race so that it doesn't get too damaged or damaged at all and then I'm just gonna carefully um, it says don't use an impact wrench so just use a ratchet or, or a wrench so this one is the counter shaft so that means it's got a reverse or left-handed thread to tighten so this is a 34 millimeter socket I think the correct socket is 33 but I don't have it and it's not a common size so we're gonna go counterclockwise to crush this thing down and we're gonna bottom this um, black uh, it's not really a gear it's it's what the parking pawl engages to stop the transmission and that's that's what happens when you park the car Okay, so this is the setup that I've got going. I'm holding it with the flathead here and I'm pushing it down here. What you got to really be careful of is um, make sure that whatever uh, collar or race that you're using doesn't bind against the shaft because you see right here it's actually spread out more once the spline start. So make sure that when you're pushing it down, it's not biting on that. and Because if it is, you, you would be destroying these splines. So double check that. Make sure that it goes over and around it instead of actually crushing it. But it's working really slow. You can see it's going down. Okay, so it's bottomed out. And once I got to a certain point, I had to actually use the parking pole. Just turned it here used it to jam this so it would stop 
And just like how I always say I don't use a torque wrench, well, this is one case where you can't even do it. There's no torque spec for this. Basically, you better feel it when it starts to stop. Don't maybe push it a little bit more, but don't uh, go too far. Otherwise, um, you'll uh, over torque this. Okay, so there's these two gears left. And just remember that for the washer, the X right there points up. And you can't switch these around because this one's too big. It actually, it'll get caught on here if you try to put it here. So you can't mix these up. And these, um, if it's got an arrow on it going counterclockwise, which this one doesn't, this one does. So this one, if the arrow's counterclockwise, that means that's the direction you tighten it. And you have to look up the torque spec. I think it's something crazy like um, 130 or 110 or 120 foot pounds. And this part I'm actually worried about because taking off with an impact is okay, but uh, you're not supposed to put the back on with an impact wrench. But the problem with doing that is not just um, the high torque, but I haven't really figured out a way to hold the case steady. Because if you try to turn that, um, this whole case is going to spin. So you're going to have to fashion like a bar with with bolts going into it, maybe on the underside, or maybe somehow using these bolts, or using 2x4s or something. I don't know. I haven't figured that out, but that's going to be the hardest part is figuring out a way to hold this thing steady while I torque this thing. Okay, so basically the repair manual, what it's saying is... You're going to put these two gears on, including this gear, which is the third clutch. You put all those um, on, and then it wants you to put, uh, it wants to torque all these down to 166 um, pound, feet, foot. And then it wants you to take it all off, use brand new nuts and washers, which costs $10 each so you're looking at $60 for brand new hardware and then it wants you to retorque the new ones down to 123 pound foot feet um, the only thing I can think of is it wants you to set everything down to a certain pressure maybe these gears down to a certain pressure or to a certain depth so that there's not um, a lot of wiggle that's all I could think of. I'm not going to do that. Um, what I'm going to actually do is put it down, use a rubber mallet or rubber hammer to tap around here, and then go down to the same uh, 123 pound foot feet. I'm going to try that. Um, and the problem. Like I said, is I'm going to have to find a way to hold this case steady while I do that because that's that's a lot of torque. I mean, 80 foot-pounds is what's on lug nuts, and that moves the whole car, so I can't even imagine how I'm going to even strap this down. Um, how I got these down, how I got started at least, is oil up the threads on the shaft, oil up this nut, oil up both sides of the the washer, and I just held this with one with my left hand, and then I, um, then I started twisting it with this. Just double check that your washer has an X facing upwards, because that's the right side. You want it to bevel like this. You don't want it to bevel like this. That's the wrong way. So I'm going to put the gear down, and you just have to spin this so that these, uh, these teeth will slide in. So what I decided to do is I'm going to flip this thing upside down. Um, this side has better lubrication because I remember that washer uh, A, B, C, D um, had blue marks on both sides of this. So I want this uh, spline washer to have uh, the better lubrication side. So this is the better lubrication side for that uh, needle bearing. 
I would show it to you, but it's kind of hard to get this thing out. So, yeah, then I'm going to I'm going to drop a third clutch on top of this afterwards. Uh, something really important I just noticed is I was about to tighten this down, then it got stuck, and then I stopped myself because I realized that um, one of the discs wasn't lining up. So if you keep doing that, you're going to destroy one of your discs. So just start wiggling it and make sure that this thing is uh, keyed into every disc and plate in here. Yeah, and then you're going to check here. Um, hopefully that's the right def. I'm going to keep trying to wiggle this to make sure that um, everything can fall down. But yeah, be really careful about this one. Okay, I'm going to take this out of park because I don't think this can take the torque without being destroyed. So take this out of park, just spin this. Or use a tool so you don't um, get your finger caught in here. And then I had a pair of jeans, which would probably be better because jeans are pretty tough. But I'm just going to use these old pair of pants and I jammed it into here so I can um, torque this down a little bit more. Basically, what I remember was um, there was like one or two threads of this shaft sticking up past um, the, uh, the shaft nuts. Maybe it's just one thread, I can't remember. But basically, um, I'm gonna jam this and then I'm gonna try to get this down a little bit more. Cause by hand, just holding it by hand, this is all I can do. This one's almost down actually. Okay, so st stuffing my pants in here doesn't seem to work for this one because um, this will spin even if this is jammed. So the main shaft holder tool is not gonna do anything. I don't, I didn't see it, I mean I didn't look that hard, but the repair manual doesn't show that you have to jam this park gear into it, but the picture does show it, it just doesn't say it for whatever reason. I don't know if they're trying to get away from um, uh, avoiding people damaging their park gear, but I put this here so there's less slack because there was a little bit of free play on here so I just jammed this thing in there um, I think this is doable what I'm doing is I'm putting both my knees against here and I can get it most of the way I'm gonna try like with every with all my strength seeing if I can get it to 123 foot pounds if not I'm gonna have to either get a cheater pipe that will fit that torque wrench because it's bigger than most ratchets or I'm gonna have to um, go ask somebody that's really strong because I'm, I'm not that strong okay so with the help of my neighbor um, we got these things all torqued down to 123 pound foot feet um, I know that it's torqued correctly because um, you can see that the fold right here, this is the old nut, so the fold went back exactly where that um, that cutout is. So I know it's torqued correctly. Same with this one. It went back exactly where the cutout is. So I know this one's also torqued correctly. This nut's new but um, and it did seem to go down a little bit more which might be normal because I don't remember um, how the other nut was the other nut had because I think this is the one that I had to um, use a cutoff wheel to cut off um, the thing because a chunk of this broke off or something or uh, the nut was busted but anyways this is a new nut and it seems to be roughly the correct def. It's one or two threads I think. So now the only thing left to do is get a punch and uh, restake these tabs back in. But um, how the repair manual says to go down to 166 
uh, pound, feet, foot, and then uh, use new nuts and washers to, to do 123 pound, foot, foot. That makes no sense because um, if these nuts went back to the same position, they're torqued correctly. And whatever else that they're trying to get me to do is maybe um, to apply more pressure to these and I don't know what they're actually talking about but a lot of things in, in the repair manual actually don't make a lot of sense so I wouldn't I skipped over a lot of the steps in the repair manual that's that's, that's pretty much how, how I can explain it okay so I got ATF on my finger and I got on everything including around these uh, guide pins and also through here too because you can see that it goes into there so went all the way around and this you can only put in one way so it has to be this way And just double check that everything's on the right. So next I'm going to put um, ATF on this side too. And I'll probably put a layer on the end cover. So the end cover is fairly complicated. Basically, um, I'll try to break down the basics here. So this cover right here, you see that there's a bolt hole. Well, this one goes into that bolt hole right there. And that's all it does, it holds this cover on. And the other bolt hole, right there, into this bolt. And that's all it does. These two bolts just hold that cover on. Here's the position sensor, neutral, um, park whatever position so this is held on by two bolts that only hold this down so it's this bolt right here and it's it's actually called a bolt washer because the washer is built into here it's captured and the other one is right here so that and that and then the cover goes on now the other part is you see there's a bolt hole there and that's all it does it holds this um, this bracket here that's all it does and then this connects to uh, the harness uh, where the where the vehicle is so we're going to take this off and the reason why I have this on a box is because there's that pipe and it's non-removable so you cannot bend it which I've done that's why I bought a brand new um, end cover um, basically you only have two types of bolts holding the end cover down it's either going to be this size you see there's a smooth part that's not threaded it's either this size or it's going to be this size. That's not. That doesn't seem right. Okay, I guess it is. So the smaller ones, there should be um, three of them. One, two, and three. And also a fourth one, which. Um, which was this so actually there's four bolts including the one for the bracket for the position sensor and then all the rest are going to be this size 
So it's gonna, this is the weird one right here. It actually has, it seems like it's longer than the rest of them. Cause here's the length for the same size bolt. This one goes down further. Plus it has that dowel pin there. So this is the only one that's really weird. And it took me a while to figure that out. But the rest are gonna be this size that I showed you the longer size. And so it's going to be here, here, here. This is another cover and it's, um, I forgot what type of sensor. Oh, this is, I think this is the pressure switch. It's either third or fourth pressure switch. And so that might be the other one. One of them's third and one's fourth pressure switch. So this cover goes on here. This just holds the cover down, but this actually bolts the end cover down. So this has a dual purpose. And here's another one, the long bolts, just like the rest of them. This is, yeah, that's a pressure switch. This right here, that's the speed sensor. And both speed sensors, there's two of them they're both the same part numbers so it's it uh, it won't matter if you mix them up but I like to keep them the same as when they came out this is a just a bracket for the wire harness and I think this yeah this does double duty so these are both the long bolts and they double they do double duty as a holder for this harness or this bracket and uh, it bolts the end cover down to the transmission housing. This probably is a bracket for something else. I don't know what it is yet. Here's another long bolt. This one is a bracket for, I think, the spin-on um, oil filter. So one, two, three, four, these are the smaller bolts and here's the longer bolt. And a lot of these, I had to transfer these bolts and I bought new washers from the old end cover and I just transferred it to here. There's a lot of random ones that look like they're for something but they're not. Like here's another one, here's another one and they have torque specifications for these I forgot what it is it could be like 13 foot pounds or 10 or something I don't know if these is these are for um, testing to read the pressure or I don't know what it is but I do know that they're they're plugging up these holes for whatever reason either for testing or whatever it's doing because behind here there's nothing that's where the shaft comes out for the position sensor. Yeah, so the only weird one you have to remember is this one. It's a long bolt, but it has a dowel pin. And then there's a second dowel pin somewhere behind here. Um, just make sure that you do get those two dowel pins there. And this, the end of this will give you a clue as to what the position is for the dowel pins. Because... These are not dowel pins. These are actually the pipes. They look like dowel pins though. Here's one dowel pin location. And the other one is right here. And then the bolts go right through the dowel pins. And then like I said, I oiled this already. I'm gonna oil um, this bottom part. Because I remember when I took this off, um, that gasket was uh, basically welded to the end cover or here I forgot which side but yeah just oil this up and this up okay so you can see that one dowel pin is right there and the other dowel pin is right there and just remember um, there's three o-rings so one is right there, the black o-ring, and then there's two together right there. And make sure you lubricate those with ATF. 
also forgot to mention that these two bolts are special. They're the really long ones. You can't mix this up. That one and this one. I realized it's easier to take out all the bolts and put this on by itself. What I do notice is this. This is a race, or not a, okay, not a race, but I believe that this is the one that this bearing goes into. So the edge of this bearing probably goes inside here. So you might want to lubricate this, or maybe not, I don't know. And this, I believe the outside of this, the outside edge, is what goes inside of this bearing. So, not sure if it helps to lubricate them, if it's a really tight fit. But also, I believe this one goes inside of this shaft. And you must make sure that these are lubricated because they go into the O-rings. So you need to lubricate the O-rings and those pipes. And you also have to make sure, um, what I did is I ripped out the dowel pins, the two of them, and I stuck it onto the case. So here's one. And lubricate the inside so it doesn't rust, because I noticed that that's a problem. And here's the other one. So lubricate it and then put it in. That way, uh, gravity won't just make it fall out of the end cover. You could use the, the pipe cutter to make it really tight but I'm not going to do that because I'd, I'd rather not have it stuck and this pipe so I think that pipe goes into there so it might help to lubricate the pipe and that and so you're just going to have to really slowly and carefully put it on I've oiled up the edge already and the gasket so I didn't show it but Basically, I saw that one o-ring was starting to come off, so I used my brass pick, the non-sharp side, and I pushed it back up. And basically, I just gently tried to set it evenly, very gently, then I just lightly tapped on it and kind of rocked it just really carefully to make sure that everything's even and not crooked and then all of a sudden it just went down so um, all that's left to do now is put the bolts back the way I showed you before what I'm going to do is very lightly coat these bolts, the thread and the smooth part of the shaft but very lightly because I noticed that in here there's the hole for, for it um, there's no way for anything to escape so if you put too much you're gonna hydro lock it which means you're gonna start compressing the oil which is really bad so you can skip this step um, it'd be safer to do that but um, I'm gonna do it because actually I'll just do it on the threaded part because um, I don't want this to rust alright I'm gonna do like a semi star shaped pattern. I've already um, started all the threads by hand. That way I don't cross thread it. And then basically after I do my start pattern, I'll get confused and not know which ones I did. So then I'm going to, at the end, I'm just going to go all the way around sequentially to make sure I got every bolt. Alright, so once again, speed sensor bolts, they're 10 millimeter heads, which means it's 6 millimeter diameter uh, body. And so that's 8.7 foot-pounds, which is 104.4 inch-pounds. 
And so these are all 10 millimeter heads. So I'm assuming they're all 8.7 foot pounds, 104.4 inch pounds. So I'm gonna do a crazy star pattern just randomly and then sequentially to make sure I got all of them. And I had to remove this one, which is looks like a ground cable or something because it blocks this bolt head. And then I'll just put it back. I'm actually gonna loosen them now so I can make sure that this bolt isn't crooked in its hole. I'll just wiggle it a little bit and then I'll um, tighten it back down. So I loosened both these bolts. So what I wanna do is I wanna wiggle it to make sure that it's not like crooked cause that, that would push the bolt down crooked. It's, um, it's just something picky that I like to do. Okay, um, I used the wire wheel to kind of clean up this thing on the other side too. Lubricated here, lubricated the shaft, took out the bolts, lubricated them lightly. So this is going to go in should be like it's in neutral now so I'm gonna gonna have to turn this and then I'll put the bolts in. So I'm just gonna use uh, my pliers, put it in here. You can hear the click. I'm gonna match it up with that and then bolt it down. What I notice is I believe that's in neutral. So when I put this in, um, it doesn't wanna sit centered with these bolts. And I think that's why there's so much, um, it's designed for play to adjust it. And so wherever neutral sits comfortably, that's where I'm going to tighten the bolts down. So you can see it's not perfectly centered in there. And I think that's exactly how you want it. Cause you don't want it to be like this. Cause now there's pressure on here. See, it naturally wants to go down like that. Okay, so I realize this is the oil temperature sensor. I realize where, why this bolt was so long. It's because this goes here under that head. That's why this is so long. And then the other part of this goes right there. And I put a new bolt there. So, so there and there. Okay, like the rest of them, it's 8.7 foot pounds. I just realized this plate actually goes under it so I have to take this thing back off because this goes on top of this because it won't fit this way all right I just realized something I've been saying pound foot feet well I don't know why but Honda writes this thing backwards so it's actually pound force feet I don't know why they write it backwards, but that's that's why I've been saying it wrong.